Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name is Reefy Ron, and today we're going to be going over the most anticipated and most requested uh, worst to best list in Killing Floor, which is the Gunslinger weapons. Gunslinger has a lot of weapons, and Gunslinger is a very popular and a very strong class, um, a class that I really enjoy playing, and so do a lot of other players. So we're going to go through the weapons from worst to best. Gunslinger has a lot of weapons, especially because they can just take half of a set of weapons, half a set of pistols. You can just have one of them. You don't need to buy two. For this, I'm not going to be including those. However, I will talk about just a single one and if it's worth getting and kind of when it's worth getting, uh, if it's worth mentioning at all. And pretty much all of these weapons you can use pretty effectively on Gunslinger. Um, it's not necessarily because the weapons are good. It's just because Gunslinger is so strong. They have incredibly strong perks and they have an extremely strong uh, base kit just with their uh, passives. So keep that at the forefront of your mind whenever we talk about any of these weapons. You can make them work. I think I've done videos using all of these on Hell on Earth as Gunslinger and really had no problems with any of them. So let's begin. So with all those rules put in place, Gunslinger currently has 13 weapons and coming in at the 13th spot is the Dual Spitfires. The Dual Spitfires are a fantastic weapon on Firebug, uh, but they are a cross perk weapon between Firebug Sharpshooter and Gunslinger. Gunslinger and Sharpshooter cannot use these weapons very well. The Spitfire also scored pretty low with the Sharpshooter, and we have yet to do the Firebug. But uh, the Spitfire honestly isn't that bad, all things considered. It just doesn't synergize with Gunslinger very well. It holds 12 rounds. These are Tier 2 weapons. They can be upgraded three times. They weigh 4. They do 40 damage a shot. Um, and they do fire damage, which is damage over time. They can also create floor fires on the ground, which can burn enemies there too. They have a good rate of fire, tying with most of Gunslinger's guns at 545 rounds per minute, which is fine. Uh, their upgrades actually scale them pretty well too. Their first upgrade adds no additional weight, which is nice. And every time you upgrade them, they scale by 25% increments in damage. That's a lot of damage. The reason why these pistols score so low for Gunslinger though, is that they just don't work the best as other pistols that they have. Um, these pistols have a very slow projectile speed, so the projectile is moving slow, so at longer ranges it can be more difficult to hit enemies. Now the projectile is much bigger. That also provides its own issues though, because its hitbox is much larger and you might hit um, a different part of the Zed that's not the head. As Gunslinger, you generally want to be hitting things in the head because that's how you can do the most amount of damage, and they have a lot of skills that give you bonus damage if you hit things in the head. So that's what you're going to be trying to go for, but it's kind of difficult to do that with these weapons, especially at long range. At close range, these things are perfectly fine. They work well against everything, and they work especially well against small enemies because the fire can kill a lot of small enemies very quickly. It's also good against things like bloats, crawlers, and uh, stalkers because all of them are weak to fire. Or in the case of stalkers, when they get lit on fire, they can no longer cloak, which is pretty nice. However, there is just simply better options for Gunslinger. So, moving on to number 12. We have the dual 1911 pistols. These, once again, are in somewhat of a similar position to the Spitfires in that there's generally better options. That's not to say the 1911s are bad. I actually really like them. They're probably one of my favorite weapons with Gunslinger, but they're not the most useful ones. These are Tier 2 weapon. They weigh 4. They hold 16 rounds, 8 each. Uh, these do 50 damage a shot. They have a 600 round per minute rate of fire, which is pretty nice. And they scale really well with upgrades. They double in damage once they're fully upgraded, which is not bad at all. These weapons do a decent job at just about everything. It's just you have even better guns than these. So there's no real downside to the 1911s other than that you could potentially go even crazier than them. Coming in at our number 11 spot, we have the dual 1858 revolvers. These are your starting revolvers. They are a cross perk weapon between both Gunslinger and Sharpshooter, at least just if you have one of them. They weigh 4, you hold 12 rounds in them, 6 in each revolver. They do 50 damage a shot. They have the same rate of fire as the Spitfires, which is 545 rounds per minute. Pretty much all the revolvers, with a few exceptions, have the same rate of fire. So they shoot pretty quick. They are fairly accurate too, and they scale really well. Their first two upgrades are also completely free. You don't add any additional weight to them, so that's pretty nice. And when they're fully upgraded, they do 2.2 times extra damage than their base. Uh, going up to a total of 110 damage per shot at a weight of 8. Um, these weapons are also pretty decent. Um, I've used these even on Hell on Earth all the way through and not really had much of an issue. I Again, I think that's more that Gunslinger is just really good, not that the revolvers are crazy good. 
but they're not bad either. They're very middle of the road um, compared to most other weapons. They're perfectly fine and a decent starting weapon. Um, you can also toss one to a friend if they want uh, one of your guns, potentially another gunslinger or potentially a sharpshooter, survivalist, um, or just somebody like a medic that just wants another gun so that they don't have to run through all their ammo as much. And they're not bad to pick up off the ground for really any class. If you see them, you know, snag them and maybe kill some small zeds with them. Coming in at our number 10 spot, we have the HX-25 Grenade Pistol. This is a cross perk weapon between uh, Gunslinger and Demo. And this is kind of an interesting weapon for Gunslinger. Uh, this weighs four. Um, it shoots out like a shotgun, kind of, um, where it shoots multiple pellets. This shoots out seven pellets that do 10 damage on direct hit and 30 damage on explosion hit. So you can do 280 damage. Um, with all of those. Now this weapon can hit uh, the rack em up skill multiple times with one shot. You can actually go from zero rack em up to five rack em up after just hitting one enemy with this, which is especially easy if you're going to use it on the bobble zed um, weekly. It makes that challenge, it makes that weekly seem pretty easy to get all the rack em ups uh, instantly with this weapon. This weapon does scale incredibly well with upgrades. Um, it goes almost to double damage, going up to a total of 532 damage uh, per shot, which is a lot of damage for just a little pistol. You can hit multiple enemies with this. Even though it is an explosive weapon, you cannot friendly fire yourself with this. Um, all the explosions do not count towards any sort of damage that you can inflict on yourself, which is great. You can also do a really fun thing with this if you have the level 25 perk uh, Whirlwind of Lead where you can fire this pretty much instantly as many times as you would like because it never needs to reload during that animation so you can just keep firing it. You can also, I believe, fire it when it's empty in that animation which is kind of weird too. But nonetheless, the Demo Pistol is actually a pretty decent little sidearm to take with uh, Gunslinger as kind of a non-meta weapon, but still a pretty fun weapon to have with them. At number 9, we have our first DLC weapon. These are the Dual Rhinos. The Rhinos are kind of a strange weapon. They are a tier 3 Gunslinger weapon. They are revolvers. They hold 12 shots uh, together. They weigh 4. They do 75 damage a shot, plus another 80 damage on shrapnel, but the shrapnel I don't believe can hit the same target unless you bounce it off a wall very close to them or a floor or ceiling um, or another object back into them. This creates three shards, so you can do potentially 210 damage uh, if you hit all of them, but they are kind of unreliable. They kind of go everywhere, similar to the nails from the nail gun, uh, but these can only be used on a ricochet or after they hit somebody. Uh, these have a higher rate of fire than some revolvers at 600 rounds per minute, so the same as the 1911s. They do scale decently well with upgrades. Um, going up to a total weight of 8, just like many of Gunslinger's uh, dual pistols do. Uh, they also have nice sights on them, which is kind of useful when you're trying to um, use the secondary fire and aim just down one of them. Makes it a little bit easier than it does with other weapons that Gunslinger has. Overall, these are a pretty decent weapon for just about everything, and they just kind of land here because of that. They're just pretty decent at everything. Coming in at our number 8 spot, we have the Dual Winter Bites. Uh, these are a very interesting weapon. These are a tier 2 weapon for Gunslinger. These... Uh, are the freezing revolvers. They hold 12 rounds in them. They weigh four. I know this sounds repetitive, but that's because a lot of gunslingers guns just happen to hit these stats. Uh, they do 49 damage a shot plus 20 explosion damage when they hit. Um, they have a two meter radius on the explosion and they can freeze enemies, of course. They have the same rate of fire as the Spitfires or the 1858 revolvers. Um, so pretty decently. And they do scale very well. They double in damage once they're fully upgraded, which is pretty nice. Um, going up to a weight of 8 and then doing quite a bit of damage. These weapons are really good for applying the freezing status to enemies. Now, these are a little bit niche. Um, they're usually not a weapon that you want to prioritize upgrading, at least if you're playing in a group, because freezing things is super useful for the team, but you should probably be doing the most amount of damage with Gunslinger that you can so that you can kill big things. And this is more of a supportive role. These come in really, really well when you've entered into a game uh, midway through and you just only have enough money to maybe buy them and one other set of guns or something like that. Or maybe you just have enough to only buy them. Or then you can uh, at least rack up some assists, get some extra cash, and then kill everything fairly quickly. Um, with your other weapons. Coming in at our number seven spot, we have the Winchester 1894. This is the cross perk weapon between sharpshooter and gunslinger. This is the tier one uh, sharpshooter weapon. This weighs four. It, hold it holds 12 rounds, similar to their other <laughs> revolvers, I guess. 
Uh, this shoots slower than most of their other guns at only 150 rounds per minute, but it does do 80 damage a shot, which is a lot of damage. This also has bonus penetration, so you can shoot through multiple enemies with it. It has very nice sights. You can reload it fairly quick with Gunslinger, since you're probably going to be going with the faster reloads, um, which is also quite nice. And this weapon scales incredibly well with upgrades going up to 250% more damage uh, when it's fully upgraded. So it goes up to a weight of 9 and does 200 damage per shot. That is a lot of damage for this weapon, and you can really uh, put out some really high DPS as well as some really high damage per shot with this weapon. It's really good. Um, even though it's only a tier 1 weapon, it's also amazing if you can find this just laying around on the ground, pick it up and use it. Um, there's really no reason not to. Uh, it is... Uh, just a fantastic little gun. <laughs> I really enjoy the Winchester. And speaking of lever actions, at number six, we have the Centerfire. This is another sharpshooter weapon that is also a cross perk weapon with Gunslinger. This weighs five, this holds 10. It does 165 damage per shot, which is a ton of damage, especially for a tier two weapon. This weapon also scales extremely well with upgrades, um, going up to a weight of eight and then having something like 260, 280 damage per shot, which is just insane. Uh, this is a really good weapon. This is potentially an upgrade to the Winchester, if you want to look at it like that. Um, it's probably a better option than throwing one upgrade into a Winchester, just taking this instead, because you do get the added sights, even though you lose a little bit of ammo. It's still a little bit stronger than that, and it's just a fantastic weapon. Everything that I said about the Winchester is just as true with the center fire at our number five spot we have the other dlc weapon for gunslinger and that is the dual glock 18 c's um, these are the fully automatic glocks they are a tier four weapon hold 66 rounds together they weigh eight they do 37 damage a shot and these have the highest rate of fire out of any weapon in the game uh, only being tied with the swats chris vector and the uh, commandos minigun so you can do an insane amount of dps with these they do so much damage per second, especially if you have rack them up, especially if you're hitting multiple headshots. Uh, they can be just overwhelmingly strong. Their one upgrade is honestly not that great. You don't get that much of an increase with their one upgrade, but they're still pretty good together. Now, this weapon functions quite a bit differently if you have one of it. Usually you get half the rate of fire with um, just having one single gun rather than having the dual guns. With the Glock, it's not that way. You actually still have a high rate of fire with just a single Glock, just not as high as with the dual Glocks and it is much more controllable. It's very easy to hold on target and fire. Uh, this feels very much like a submachine gun to me, um, similar to maybe like the MP5 or the UMP, uh, somewhere around there. That general kind of, uh, not necessarily rate of fire, but that sort of spread and uh, that recoil to it. And having a single Glock is actually pretty good. It allows you to pick off small enemies very quickly. At our number four spot, we have the HM Tech 101 Medic Pistol. This is a cross perk weapon between Gunslinger and Medic. It weighs one weight. It holds 15 rounds. Uh, it does 20 damage per shot with a 342 round rate of fire. It's secondary fire. It fires out healing darts that can heal allies. If you hit enemies, they can poison them. Poison isn't usually worth it, but the healing is very useful. Um, this weapon is also incredibly cheap because it is only another tier one weapon. Gunslinger has access to quite a few of the tier one weapons, uh, that are actually pretty good. This weapon also scales incredibly well with upgrades. Its first upgrade gives it no weight whatsoever and scales it, uh, by another 70% more damage, which is nice. When it's fully upgraded, it triples in damage, uh, going up to a damage of 60 per shot and weighing four. This, every time you upgrade this weapon, it also lowers the... Uh, healing dart time so the darts can come up faster so you can heal teammates much easier. This weapon is just all around fantastic because a weight of one makes it fit so easily into so many loadouts. You don't need to upgrade this. If you do upgrade it, you're probably not going to be disappointed with it because again, with rack em up, even the medic pistol can feel incredibly strong, um, which the medic pistol is usually not the most powerful weapon. But with that, it kind of feels pretty, pretty devastating against a lot of enemies. Um, and then constantly being able to heal teammates is always useful. All of that combined with this being an on-perk weapon for Gunslinger is amazing. So yeah, Medic Pistol gets the number four spot just through sheer utility alone. In our number three spot, we have the Dual 2011s. These are two 1911s um, attached together. So that's a bit strange. They weigh six, they hold 32 rounds. They have a very odd 461 rounds per minute rate of fire. Um, they fire out two bullets every time you pull the trigger, uh, both these bullets doing 53 damage a shot. 
So you can stack rack them up much faster with these weapons than most other weapons. And that's really where they get a lot of their DPS because they can suddenly uh, shell out a ton of DPS all of a sudden onto just about any target. They're great for killing small enemies. They're pretty good for killing big enemies too. You can completely destroy Scrakes and Flesh Pounds with these just as easily as you could with most of other most of the other gunslinger weapons do. Um, they're just all around great. They are kind of bullet hoses if you spam fire them, but spam firing them into crowds is also not a bad option because you're likely going to body shot um, a lot of different Zeds and hitting with two bullets at the same time is more likely to hit headshots. So that's pretty nice. It's one upgrade is honestly not that great. Um, it doesn't really get that much more damage. And other than that, they're pretty solid all around uh, rapid rate of fire guns. In our number two spot, we have the dual 500 Magnums. These are the powerhouse guns of Gunslinger, if there is one, because Gunslinger has a lot of powerhouse guns. Uh, these weapons weigh six. They hold 10 rounds in them rather than the usual 12 for revolvers. They hold five each. These do 160 damage per shot, which is a lot. They have a 315 rounds rate of fire, which is slower than most of the revolvers. Uh, but these are very powerful. They can punch through multiple enemies, uh, killing them very easily. It's one upgrade is decent. It gives it an okay amount of damage, um, taking it up to eight weight. The 500 revolvers are just so much fun to use. So you really can't go wrong with the 500s. They are great. They do have a good amount of recoil at low levels, so they are a little bit difficult to control. Uh, but once you level up a bit and you have that passive uh, recoil reduction, they're not that bad overall. And then finally, at our number one spot, I'm sure you guys all seen this coming, we have the dual Desert Eagles. These are pretty insane. These are a tier three weapon for Gunslinger. They hold 14 rounds. They weigh four. They do 98 damage per shot. They scale really well with upgrades too. Both their upgrades give them a decent amount of damage and they go up to a total weight of eight. Anybody who's tried the dual Desert Eagles will tell you they are some of the best weapons in uh, Killing Floor, at least for Gunslinger. Even off Gunslinger, they are still pretty strong. Um, the really high DPS that you can do with them, the pretty high damage per shot that they have, the ability to just body shot small enemies are all just really nice. They work well against pretty much everything. There's nothing that they're incredibly weak against. Um, and they don't cost all that much, which is really nice too. So that's why the Deagles get our number one spot here with Gunslinger weapons. So that'll do it for Gunslinger weapons from worst to best. Almost all of the guns, well, pretty much all the Gunslinger weapons you can use pretty effectively on them because they are just such a strong class. So tell me which class you would like to see next. We still have Medic, Firebug, and Survivalist, I believe, to do. Uh, each of those are going to be very interesting to do. I believe I'm going to be doing Survivalist a little bit different than the other uh, two, but we'll save that as a surprise for that video. Uh, so thanks everybody for coming out here and watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you really enjoy this video, then be sure to subscribe. That way you get notifications whenever I post anything. And I will see all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool and bye.